Welcome back to Ice Bat Sports. I'm Griff. I'm uh, Matt. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is our first our first podcast since the new year. So happy new year, everyone. Happy new year. Happy new year. Um, last week we we did take off for um, reasons which most of you know. Um, I guess we could even start it off with that now that we there's kind of more clarity there and like a lot of good news coming out of yeah. that situation. Um, Demar Hamlin. Yeah. Um, for those of you that watched. Uh, the Bills Bengals game, and no, it was cut short. Um, unfortunately, uh, Demar Hamlin went into cardiac arrest on the field uh, after a big hit uh, that he delivered to T. Higgins, who um, had, had. I mean, it's not his fault at all. No, no. I do no. want to clarify that. I know I saw a lot of people coming out and, and yeah, blaming that, T. Higgins, and that makes no sense ridiculous. to me. It's ridiculous. It's just it's a bizarre occurrence that happened, and I'm really glad Demar Hamlin's all right. He was just. Discharged from uh, Cincinnati Hospital. He's yep, back they, in they what, flew Buffalo. Him, yeah, they flew him back home to Buffalo. He is still. Um, they're still monitoring him mm. in the general hospital in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, but he's out of ICU, and yeah, I mean, it's just like a miracle. Th- yeah, I mean, th- thank, huge, thank God. huge shout out to the athletic trainer that did CPR on him for nine straight minutes. Yep. Um, personally, I've never done CPR, but like hearing stories of people that are CPR certified have done CPR. Like you cannot stop for those that no time. no I um I took a class in high school it was required to get the certification and it, it's exhausting I mean they had us do it for, do it for like ninety seconds yeah and, and I was I was beat after just because you know you, you're con- continuously pumping and then you you know you're trying to deliver and then uh, air into the other person and it, it really takes your breath away so uh, nine minutes is crazy yeah so huge shout out to the athletic trainers I mean they really saved his life on the field. Yeah, and I'm I'm just so glad he's doing all right. I mean, such a young kid. Um, I mean, will he play football again? That's a whole other question. I uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I mean, you don't know if it's an underlying condition or if it was just something. I think that it, happened. It, it seems from like what I was reading. I don't again. I don't want to speculate anything, but it's right. it's a very common thing among like teenage boys, especially they say. Wow. Um, I I forget the the term for it. It's two two long words. Both start with C. Yeah, I, and, I know uh, you're talking about. Yeah, I and saw. it's it's actually common among little league baseball players. Really, um, which is why they actually started making the uh, the chest protectors to wear underneath like the the shirts. Hmm. Um, what happens is like the the young little league players don't have like the reflexes to catch a line drive hit right back at them. Oh, it hits them, and it, it'll hit them like right at that. It's like something that happens like in a split second. Like if it if it happened ninety nine other hundreds of a second it would it would be fine right it's just it, it, right at, with the heartbeat right, right yeah. and, and it stops yeah it's yep. scary stuff um but thank god he's okay i know we've been keeping him in our prayers and out of respect we didn't make an episode last week yeah i mean i i feel like uh like personally when something like that happens when we had no answers coming out of it i mean we've recorded on tuesday so it was the day after right um it's just it just wasn't a, an appropriate time to Not at all. be talking about football talking about the week when no, life is when we just had some football. yeah we just had somebody that we didn't even know if he was going to be alive right. um thankfully he seems to be recovering well actually did you see what the uh the icu nurses were saying in cincy he was setting off all the alarms in the yeah. ICU after, after the uh, yeah. opening kickoff return from just jumping around. So yeah, yeah. So he's in good spirits, which yeah. is good to see. And then yeah, how about Nahum Hines with those, you know, two uh, return kick return touchdowns in a game? The f- that's the first time since uh, was it 2010? Yeah, yeah, that there was two kick return touchdowns in a game by one person. It, uh, the last one was Leon Washington, Washington and from Seattle, right? It was when he was with Seattle, but yeah. Jets legend Leon Washington. I loved Leon Washington. <laughs> he was an electric return man. Yeah. Um, well, and Demar Hamlin is not the only um, unfortunate medical news in the football world. Uh, Peyton Hillis. Yeah, I mean, this one hasn't really gotten the media attention that yeah, I think it much deserves. Um, this guy, Peyton Hillis, obviously, many of you guys know who Peyton Hillis is. Had the huge year with the Browns, got on the cover of Madden, mm-hmm. was an absolute stud. Um, he actually is also in ICU right now. He saved his kids from drowning. Yeah. Um, so prayers to him. Um, from an update sure. from, I believe it was his uncle, he seems to be doing really well. Yeah. Um, I know yesterday there was an update that came out that he was still coughing up sand, which is insane. Like there's, wow. He's got some lung and kidney issues right now. 
But if um, he's in better condition, he is in better I mean, condition than he was. Thank, so thank God. But yeah, I mean, he's a he's a true hero. I hope he makes a full recovery because his kids deserve to have their father around after that. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Yeah, no. without a, but a Peyton father, Hill's going know, out and, to save his kids. Sa- right. his kids are doing well now. And what a heroic act! I know. know. I mean, it just speaks for. I mean, the type of guy he is. Uh, like, <sighs> so yeah, we we had to get all that out of the way. Um, yeah, I mean, parish respects. Yeah, so. but. Um, on a lighter note, it's playoff time. The playoffs are here, baby. It's it's pretty unbelievable how quick this season went by. It, it um, went by it went by like that. It was really Crazy. quick. Um, but the playoffs are here. The playoffs are set. Um, I mean, yeah, they start Saturday. We're we're kicking it off the four thirty five game Seattle against San Fran. Yeah. Um. This is this this, sh- this should be Detroit. I'm sorry, Detroit should be. In, in this this spot right now, in my personal opinion, I just uh, no no offense to Seattle or Geno Smith or anything, but Detroit was just such such a fun team to watch, and they went out and you know even having nothing to play for on Sunday night, you go and you beat the Packers and well, keep them out from the playoffs. I I'm with you. Like it would be great to see the Detroit, but they have nobody to blame but themselves. They allowed yeah. 320 rushing yards to the. Carolina Panthers and lost that game. No, you're right. I just I would much personally rather. <laughs> no, see, I, I mean see I, I I agree with you there, but yeah, you can't allow over 300 yards on the ground to Carolina, who traded away Christian, Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey weeks prior. So yeah. it's not even like you're allowing uh, 250 yards to C Mac on the ground. Yeah. You're allowed over 300 yards to Ch- uh, Chuba Hubbard and Deontay Foreman, which. Granted, sure, they're they're solid NFL running backs, but they're not superstar backs by any means. No, no. But um, with, with, with that off my chest, uh, I got to go San Fran here. I mean, Seattle's kind of lucky to be in the playoffs right now. They are. Um, they are very lucky, but uh, we got to give credit to Geno Smith. You do. Um, he had just an unbelievable year. And in, in a year where, you know, everyone really thought Seattle was going to be a bottom one team. Like I, I think everyone yeah. had them written off right at the beginning. Yeah, but no, Geno Smith, Gino right Smith ain't right back. <laughs> um, I, I mean personally, I wrote them off. I thought they were going to finish with the top two pick this year. Um, granted, they're they're finishing with a high pick, and it's not even their own. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely a crazy story. I mean, Geno Smith coming out of the woodwork after however many years being a backup, and then he comes out and he's a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. Yeah, is just shocking um I, I mean he has the weapons to do it though he's had tyler lockett he has dk metcalf and kenneth walker has made a name for himself out of that backfield um all offensive weapons but their defense hasn't really been up to snuff um i just don't see how they are able to contain george kittle debo samuel christian mccaffrey yeah and you got elijah mitchell back now yep, um mitchell's back so you, like, they're getting their weapons back yep. like you said debo's back um, Debo played a little bit last week and he said after the game, he feels a hundred percent. So, I mean, yeah, I, I can't not go with San Fran here. San Fran's a scary team and, and uh, being a Philadelphia Eagles fan, I definitely don't want to meet them in the playoffs. I don't think anybody wants to meet this team in the playoffs. I mean, cause what are the, what are the, the two biggest things when it comes to the playoffs? I say this all the time, defense and run game. Yeah. And they are top tier, both of those aspects They they have the number one defense and they have a pretty solid run game. Uh, I'm not sure and exactly he, where they stand. You just got two weapons back in the run game in Debo Samuel and Elijah Mitchell. So you take you take some of the weight off of C Mac's shoulders there. Mm-hmm. I mean that's a scary running attack. Yeah, they have they have a top ten run uh, rushing offense. So definitely not a team you want to face. Sorry in the uh, playoffs. Yeah. Um, so I mean, uh, yeah, I don't see how you don't go San Fran here. Yeah, I gotta go San Fran. I, I, I mean, personally, I, I would love to see Brock Purdy make a run in the playoffs. Just what a story, Mister yeah. Irrelevant to making a run in the playoffs after coming in after two quarterbacks go out for the year. Yeah, I mean, I'm the farthest thing from a San Fran fan, but I find it hard not to root for Brock Purdy. Just oh you know, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I think even at, at, like any football fan, you're rooting for you're yeah. rooting for Brock Purdy here. Mm-hmm. Um. And and I I mean for the same for same reasons you're probably rooting for Geno Smith, I mean as a Jet fan I would love to see Geno Smith go out there and uh, I mean Geno Smith uh, he's had this is kind of like a second chance for him yeah he he was a first round pick he was no he wasn't he went second round I believe. Oh, second round but still he was a high round pick is my point 
and he uh you got Mr. Relevant he's playing against Brock Purdy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh pick thirty nine, so beginning so, of the second so round. So beginning of the second round. Still, that's that's you're expected to be good, you're expected greatness when when you're taking that high. Yes, but at Brock the same Brock Purdy was taking last pick in the NFL draft. You're not expecting it. He's not even expecting to make a roster, much less enough start and lead a team to a Super Bowl. I mean, I find Brock Purdy's story a lot more inspiring. I get what than you're Geno saying, Smith. but at the same time, like, even in preseason, people were debating whether it was going to be Geno Smith or Drew Locke to start for this team. Yeah. No, I, I, I know, but I just, I, Geno Smith being a high draft pick, he's been in the league for forever. He's had multiple opportunities to be a starting quarterback. He, yeah, great for him. He's proven now that, like, He's a solid quarterback in the league. But I just don't find that as inspiring as Mr. Relevant coming in. Third string guy, barely made the team, and is leading that team to potentially a Super Bowl. Yeah, I I don't know. I I think they're both great stories. And I think – I actually think this will be a really good game. Um, I think Seattle's run game is very strong. I mean, you you hit on it before with uh, Kenneth Walker – I mean, Kenneth Walker is probably going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. You think? I think it's going to go to G. Will. I don't think... See, like, my issue is that going into Sunday, I'm pretty sure... um, I could be wrong, but I'm 99% sure Mm. Kenneth Walker was the betting favorite, and he went out and put up over 100 on the ground. And I I think it just solidified that. Plus, they're in the playoffs, and he's a big reason why. That's true. Yeah, I mean, Um, Kenneth Walker's been a, a beast down the stretch. Now... Uh, I, I personally, injury. like, taking the Jets bias aside, I think Garrett Wilson was one of the only reasons why we had a chance on offense mm-hmm. to actually put up some points. Um, and I also think Chris Olave deserves some, some love in that conversation. He definitely here. deserves some recognition, yeah. for sure. Um, Great rookie class, though. Yeah, yeah. I think it's surprising a lot of people because I, I felt like, uh, you know, there was definitely talent in this class, but, it, you know, people were, like, trying to compare it to 2020, 2021, like, you know, hey, the, the, these draft classes were, were heavy quarterbacks, um, he, heavy quality quarterbacks, I should say. Yeah. And, that you know, that that kind of weights somebody's perspective more so like, hey, th- this draft class is better than, than this one. Kind of like uh, 2014. 2014 didn't really have any spectacular quarterbacks coming out of it, but look at all the talent that came out of 2014's draft. You know, guys like Mike Evans, Aaron Donald, you know, uh, just to name a, f- a few. Um but and doesn't get as much recognition. I think that this draft class is going to be really similar to that, where it's just stacked with talent. But because there, there's not a lot of you know good quarterbacks that come out of the the, the class, it's not yeah. get as much recognition. No, I I agree. And I like even uh, while we're still on Seattle here. I mean, Tariq Woolen deserves a lot of credit. Yeah. He he came in. He was what was he fourth round pick, third round pick, yeah, fourth or fifth. I think he was a fourth round pick. He might have been a fourth. I feel like fourth just sounds right. Oh no, he was fifth. Fifth was round fifth. pick. And and then they took. I know they took him and Kobe Bryant around the same yeah. time. Who Kobe Bryant's also had a solid year. He has. I mean, he's been they've got a they've got a Roland. really solid young secondary right now. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely a team that next year I could see being a, you know in a, in a better position in the playoffs. Um, yeah. But I, just, I think they're getting screwed. They're not screwed, but with their matchup, it's like they don't really even have a shot. You're playing San Fran. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, San Fran is just a dog. Yeah, but I also don't take away that's it's a divisional matchup. Yeah, this is the third time they're playing each other. That's true. Um, I think San Fran went two and zero against them, right? Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to beat a team three times. It really so is. I wouldn't wouldn't count out Seattle like we have been, but uh, I got to go San Fran. Next up, uh, what is this, Saturday night at eight? Yeah. Saturday night, eight fifteen. We got the Chargers against the Jags. Chargers Jags, Jags hosting, correct? Yeah, yeah. They won the division. Um, yeah, I mean, like it's it's hard for me to not pick the Jags. This team is just so fun to watch, and I've talked about it week in week out. Ever since they started getting hot, like they're they're one of, they're like they're America's team right now. Everyone's rooting bit. for the Jags. Yeah, you want to see Trevor Lawrence succeed. You saw what he went through last year with Doug, Pe- or not Doug Peterson, with Urban, Urban Meyer. Meyer. Yeah, sorry, Doug. <laughs> now he's got Doug Peterson, who's an outstanding head coach and has really turned this team around. Mm-hmm. And the young talent they have next year, they're getting Calvin Ridley. Like this team's really good. Yeah, and I think Jacksonville is is 
Well, that's similar to kind of how we were talking about Seattle in, in the terms of they're going to be in a lot better of a position next year going into the playoffs than they are this year. Um, you're playing a tough team in, in the Chargers. Although the Chargers don't have the best coaching, in my opinion, Brandon Staley, I, I think, you know, if it were up to me, probably would not have a job after this season. I 100% agree. Um, well, Brandon Staley, got, Brand, you, Brandon Staley's the, the reason why Mike Williams won't be playing in this game. Right. Right, you run out your starters for mm-hmm. a meaningless game against the Broncos, and <laughs> Mike Will gets carted off. Which yep. that's another guy who just can't stay healthy. Um, but at the same time, your coach is throwing you into the water, and you just mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. It's yeah. For, for me, I mean personally, I'm picking Jacksonville in this game. See, I'm really conflicted because I I want to go Jacksonville. I really do. I think that they can win this game. I think that they're able to win this game. But the Chargers. Justin Herbert, I just I think is a little bit better than Trevor Lawrence as it stands right now. I think they're they're pretty even on defense, in my opinion. Um, Chargers are a little banged up on 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 D. Uh, yeah. Jacksonville has a lot of. I mean, Chargers have been banged up, up all year, uh, yeah. all around the field. Right, right. So uh, I don't know, man. It's just. You, you go, you look at the defenses, they're kind of similar. You look at the offenses, you give slight edge to, to quarterback with, with Justin Herbert, in my opinion. Uh, and then you look at the, the options, Austin Eckler versus Travis Etienne. You got to go Eckler. Uh, you got Keenan Allen, Christian Kirk. I think, probably, probably even I there. think Jacksonville's just deeper at receiver right now, and I think their passing game is just going to – Yeah, I, I think they win it through the air. Yeah, it's. I, th- I think it's for sure going to be a shootout. I just I think the Chargers are going to get the edge here. I mean, they're notoriously not the greatest when it comes to playoff games, um, but Justin Herbert's a different breed. He is. I think this game ends on a Foya Seda Luwakun pick. Really? I just wanted an excuse to say his name. But. Yeah, I'm I'm thoroughly <laughs> impressed that you were able to pronounce that. <laughs> I I could never. I think he the, he's gone two years in a row now, leading the league in tackles too, um, which is quite impressive. Mm-hmm. Especially we have so so many good linebackers nowadays. Um, I I just like this Jaguars team all around. I think I they've I got like a, the energy. they've got a strong defense. Um, they need a little bit of help on in the secondary, and I think that's where. I mean, we'll we'll get into more of what we're doing this off season because we've got some really cool ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, it, Jags like next year. We've been saying it like. Actually, you said it a couple weeks ago. You said Jags next year win that division. Well, they won it this year. Right. And I think they're going to be a team that comes in and wins the, this division year in and year out for the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, Doug Peterson, Trevor Lawrence, match made in heaven. It really is. Yeah, I mean, Doug Peterson's a quarterback whisperer. Trevor Lawrence is one of the most highly touted uh, quarterbacks, quarterbacks ever. ever. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen somebody as hyped coming out of college as, as him. Yeah, him and Andrew Luck, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I don't uh, know. I, I, would, I would argue Lawrence even more, just because of all those national yeah, championships, the winning. I agree. Uh, all the winning he did with Clemson. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I, I do like the Jacks, Jacksonville Jaguars, and I find, I've, I find it really hard to bet against them here. I just, I don't know. I think Chargers are a little more experienced, and I think that experience is going to help them out here. All right, yeah, I'm going Jags. Uh, right. Then it goes into Sunday. We got another divisional game. We got the Dolphins versus the Bills, and I don't think this game should be close. Um, you know, it, if it depends, it depends. I, I just don't see any way Tua plays in this game. He's had two major concussions this season. Like, how do you keep putting him out there this season? And yeah. I, I just, I don't think for. For his long term health and long term ability to play in this league, it's a smart idea to put him out there. You're 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 already outmatched. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm like they shouldn't be in the playoffs. I'm it, sorry. It comes down to does to a play for me. Um, if two plays, I think this is a really close game. I think Buffalo wins regardless outright. Um, I, st- I I think Miami puts up more of a fight with two at quarterback. Than with oh, Skylar Thompson, a hundred percent. Nobody, yeah, I don't. I think everyone's agreeing with that. But well, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater is more than serviceable, but I just don't think he can 
swing he, it like Tua could. I don't think he is more than serviceable anymore. He's, really? I think he's. I don't think he's good at all. I think he's one of the. I think he's a bottom tier backup at this point. Yeah, he, he he played terrible this year. He has. He has. In, in the moments when he got in, which was actually quite a bit, mm-hmm. he was. He looked terrible. Um, and listen, I don't know if Tua is their long term answer at quarterback. And I, I've kind of been going back and forth with some of the some of the moments, some of the throws that he's made. He looks he looks like a, a really strong NFL quarterback, and then he makes some of these under throws. And I don't know. I do know that Tua gives them a better chance to win this game than any other quarterback on that roster. But I do not believe that he should be playing in this game. Absolutely not. I mean, I mean, yeah, you made a point earlier. The, the concussions that he's suffered. I mean, if you're in high school, you're your career, your football career is almost done. Yeah. With, with the amount of concussions he's had. Yeah. Um. So I mean, just because the league, it shouldn't be any different. I agree. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm going Buffalo regardless of who's at quarterback. Um. If it is Skylar Thompson or Teddy Bridgewater or uh, Mike Glennon, then Buffalo wins by like four scores. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, Mike Glennon. Oh, I forgot about Mike Glennon. Yeah, they did sign him. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, I think Buffalo blows him out if it's anybody but Tua. And like you said, if Tua's in there, I think it's a little bit closer. I still think Buffalo wins by a couple scores, even with Tua. You know, I don't um, see like I don't see Buffalo losing. I don't see Buffalo losing either. But again, it's a divisional game. It is, and <sighs> Buffalo's defense has been a little subpar lately. They have, yeah. There's no denying that. I mean, they can't they. they they can't really stop opposing offenses that that well. No, Mac Jones was having a day against them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he threw three picks, but that's just Mac Jones. Yeah, Mac Jones. Well, I mean, yeah, but then like they couldn't slow down Devonte Parker. No, but now you now you have to come in and try to slow down Tyree Kill and, and Jalen they struggle against the run too. And uh, Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. I tell you, Mostert's looked unbelievable lately. Yeah, Mostert's just been a hard runner. He's mm-hmm. running through defenders and he's fast. now. He's really fast. I love her he most. Yeah, so I don't. I just I. With these divisional games in the playoffs, you never know. It's it's almost a coin flip. No matter how good a, a team has been all season, or how bad a team has been all season, you, you got to kind of throw that out the door and, and and look at this as this is a new season. I mean, it's not in terms of like players' uh, stamina and their health and and their durability. Like they, yeah, they they played, you know, most of them seventeen games this, this season already but in, in terms of like you gotta leave it all out on the field yeah no I, I, mean, I agree I expect um, Mike McDaniels to come out and, and use everything in, you know every single uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, trick 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 in the yes thank you every single trick in the book that he has and he has a lot of them look at oh, what yeah, he did he back does. with San Fran so and with the speed of Raheem Mostert Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill I don't think this is going to be uh, a, a blowout by any means. I think it's going to be a really close game, but I think Buffalo's also probably going to be riding high. Um, you know. Yeah, how could you not be? Yeah, with, with Demar Hamlin's health being I mean, a lot better. If, if Hamlin keeps improving, imagine he's at that game. Yeah. Oh yeah. On the side, like. I mean, they're they're going to carry his spear all throughout the, the, these playoffs. Yeah. I could see them going deep, um, I and agree. also, both them and the Bengals are got screwed out of that one seed. They really did. They, they I don't got think absolutely Casey screwed. didn't deserve the one. No, seat. I mean it's not Casey's fault. No, like, no, not at all. But like Casey just went out and played their games. Like there's nothing they could do. Right. But I I completely agree. Either Buffalo or Cincy deserved that one. Seat. So Buffalo and Cincy are both playing on a sh- with a chip on their shoulder this week. They really are. Um, so I I think they they both win. Um, outright. Yeah, we got uh the Giants at Minnesota for the four thirty game. Um, we have we both have the upset here. Yeah, and I don't. Is it really that much of an upset? What's the I, line? I think on for this? some people it is. I don't even. I, I think the line is three, which is, is ironic because that's how much the Giants lost by the last time they played. Yeah. Which was a close game that I had said on that podcast that the following week the Giants should have won. Well, yeah, I mean they should have. I don't think there's any denying that. I mean they they just made some stupid plays at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm go. We're both going with the Giants here. Brian Dable's a really really good coach. He's gonna have this team prepared really for this good. game. And the Giants' defense, even though it was the like the second string uh, defense playing against Philly this past week, held Philly to what twenty two. Yeah, I mean, 
Philly was running a super simplified vanilla offense. I mean, it wasn't really trying to get anybody hurt. I think it was kind of, you know, playing really conservative. But then again, you still got to go out there. You still got to go through the, the motions and play the reps and try to win that game. And, I mean, they put a valiant effort towards the end. Their defense looked solid. Um, yeah, I mean, I just – the Giants are also getting a little more healthy. Uh, Kenny Galladay made some big catches. <laughs> well, yeah, what was – that? his touchdown was, like, unreal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if, if they can get him playing like that against Minnesota – well, the, giant, the mean, thing is, I don't think Kenny Galladay even touches the field in this game. I, really I, th- I think he might have earned himself some playing time after last week. I, I don't. Going out and, and, and you know putting together the effort The that problem is you're fighting for time with guys that really earned it like all season long, and guys like Richie James, Isaiah, Isaiah Hodgins. Hodgins. Like, those are the guys that really earned their playing time. And those are the I guys think, that didn't play last week I think because Hodgins, you got to sit your starters. At that Hod- Hodgins and Bellinger, definitely your top two threats, but... I think a guy like Richie James, who's had issues with drops all season, I would much rather throw out Kenny Galladay out there. I wouldn't. I would. Talk about drops. Yeah, but he's, he's a bigger body. Ooh, he's, and Richie James he, has not been much better with the drops. Mm, Kenny Galladay can't separate at all. He's Kenny Galladay's not a good receiver. He was, he was doing a lot of separation against Darius Slay last week. I don't think Slay was trying that hard, let's be real. It uh, doesn't matter. He, he was still going up against Darius Slay. I mean, for the integrity. Yeah. I don't know. I, of the game, I, I'm sure Slay was trying. I don't think Kenny Galladay is a good receiver at all. And he was I, great I don't with think Detroit. He, I wouldn't even say he was great. He had one good season. Yeah, he had a breakout season, and then he signed all that money, and then and did nothing. Kind of fell off. I mean, he. But yeah, but he, like even before his breakout season, he wasn't good. He was. I, he was pretty solid. He, he. I mean, he got separation up until past year or two. He's had he's had injury issues. He's had That's two, been his issue. He, he had back to back seasons over a thousand yards, and yeah. every other season in his career, he's never gone over five hundred fifty. Yeah, because he's been played with injuries. I mean, no, not yeah. really. Last year, he played in fourteen games and had five hundred receiving yards. Mm-hmm. But he was, he was it was one of these things where it was like a questionable tag, like every week last year. He still played. I don't know. Yeah, I, but I, I just I, I don't know. When, when you're questionable, like every week, and sometimes you're used as a decoy. I mean, they they didn't get him involved in the offense at all. But also, it was a different coaching regime uh, last year with the Giants too. Their offense was just stagnant all around. Yeah, but what did he do this year? Nothing. He, he, yeah, you're right. He sucked this year. <laughs> he was but, terrible. He, but he, I'm saying he showed promise against Philly. I, I don't and know. And I, I think just, I think he might have earned himself a little more playing time against Minnesota. I can't justify giving Kenny Galladay playing time. Is all I'm gonna say. I just don't think he's good. I, I think he can go back to what he was. I just think he's having a really bad year. Bad two years. But last year, it was horrible coaching. Like, like I said, the, the offense was stagnant all around. I can't make excuses for him. He's... I, I don't know. I just can't make any excuses for the guy. <laughs> all right. I mean, uh, all I'm saying is I think you should throw him out there in, like, red zone packages, and, and you know, he's a big body to throw to. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I disagree. All right, we got Baltimore uh, at Cincinnati. But we, we're, we're both on the Giants. We are. Okay. Baltimore at Cincinnati for the Sunday night game. Um, I mean, back-to-back weeks these teams are playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably going to be Lamar. Huntley. Lamar. They said Lamar's back. Like, officially a back? Um, or? They haven't made the official announcement, but, like, everything was leaning towards Lamar playing in this game. Hmm. Lamar told people he thinks he'll be back, but there's a twist. What's the twist? Yeah, what's the twist here? Oh, I don't know. I don't feel <laughs> like reading. Um, yeah, I mean, if Lamar plays, it's going to, again, this is similar to the Miami Buffalo, another divisional game, but I think since he walks away with this one. I agree. Um, I, I think they walk away with it regardless of who's that quarterback. It's yeah, I mean, since he's, since he's had a solid defense uh, this, yeah. this season. And but it, it's, it was better than it was last year. For sure, and, and last year looked pretty pretty yeah. darn good um i mean they went to the super bowl uh i don't know i, I just since he again they got screwed out of having a chance for that the number one seed they did uh so i just i don't see a yeah no i they, since he lose. since he's one of the best teams in football um baltimore all year long you think just, since he's one of the best teams in football right now i do hmm. i really do um baltimore all year long has not impressed me at all 
no matter who's at quarterback. I mean, they just didn't do enough to build build up an offense. Yeah. They they left receiver alone, and it really hurt them this year because Mark Andrews uh, has all the attention on him, and like defenders could just cue in on him. And he had a down year because of that. What's this? This doesn't. This graphic doesn't show the seeding. What's the seeding right now? So say uh, so say Buffalo wins, Cincy wins, Chargers win. Chargers would be playing KC, right? Um, it would be Buffalo God, Cincy. Last year, why can't I? Let's see NFL. Playoff. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be Buffalo Cincy again. It'd be Chargers, Chiefs. It would be Chargers, Chiefs, Buffalo, Cincy. Correct. Right. Correct. So, yeah, I don't know. I just I think if, if Cincy's offensive line scares me. Uh, uh yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, they they lot. had they had some games and some moments where they looked really good, and mm-hmm. then when people start talking about how good they're looking, they sucked again. But I just I don't think anybody you know you go you have to play Buffalo. Who's who's blocking um, who who's that that and that Russo. Yeah, Gregory Russo. Yeah, who's blocking I, him? The issue, I, I don't know if the O-line's the biggest issue for um, Cincy when it comes to the sacks and stuff like that. I think a lot of it falls on Joe Burrow just not throwing the he's, ball away. It, he's also not the most mobile. I mean, Not he's, even, he's, he's not, mobile not even enough, that, though. But... Like he He's even admitted as long as it's not taking them out of like field goal range, he's going to take the sack. Like He doesn't like throwing the ball away. Yeah. I just... I think that offensive line can, you know, poise to be an issue. And then, it, God forbid, if, if they ever have to face the Chargers in the conference, I mean... I don't think the Chargers make it past this round, though. I'm just saying, if the Chargers if the Chargers have to play since, since in the, the conference, Chargers going to the Super Bowl because Joey Bosa and Cleo Mack, there's no way Bengals are stopping that. Oh, no, I agree. I agree. I, I just... mean, even, even the Chiefs. The Chiefs, you got... Carl Loftus, who's looked really good in the reps he's gotten. Yeah. Um, I think didn't Frank Clark get hurt? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so they did lose him, but uh, uh, Casey's pass rush has been pretty solid um, this this year too. I, I just I think since he uh, since his O line is going to cost them going down the road. I think they win this game. Yeah, I uh, I do I do believe since he wins this game as well. Um, like I said for. The reasons that Baltimore's offense just hasn't been good. Even their secondary wasn't that good this year. You got Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey. Neither looked really good. No. Um, I don't know. They some something's gotta change in Baltimore. They should be a better team. They just gotta they gotta do more in the offseason to build up a team around maybe it won't even be Lamar. Well, like, I got we'll the see. notification uh about ten minutes ago. I believe they extended Roquan Smith, so Did they? Yeah. Um Really? So yeah, I was I wanted to wait until we talked about this game to bring that up but uh yeah i'm almost certain they extended roquan smith i saw something about roquan so really yeah let's see uh did i oh yeah i think they they uh did something with them go to go to shafter rap report oh yeah shafter and uh i mean between him and patrick queen that that's a nice little linebacking core you got there uh in Baltimore, I mean, you, you have some some pieces to build around on that defense. It's just you, you also have some some guys who are aging, getting a little older, and you gotta you know. I don't see replace anything them. about Roquan. I could have swore, dude. Was it Rapport? Could have been, but you you would think. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, told you. Roquan spent five years, a hundred mil. Wow. Forty five fully guaranteed and sixty mil in total guarantees. Um. Yeah. Wow. So I mean that's that's a massive extension for. He's the first off-ball linebacker to get twenty million a year. Wow! And he had no agent. He represented himself. Good for him. Good for you, Roquan Smith. Damn. Getting that's out a, of Chicago, yeah, getting bad. paid. Good for him. Yeah. That's I, I love Roquan. I thought I thought that was a really good trade. That was a great trade, and they didn't have to give up second too, round, too much, right? Yeah, too much for him. Yeah. So uh, then we got the last game is Monday oh, night. God. I can't believe we were forced to watch this game on Monday night. <laughs> America's team, baby. Like I, I honestly think like <sighs> the the Giants and Vikings game should have been the Monday night game. I think that's a better game than this. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I think that's I think that's going to be a great game. I think this game is going to be painful to watch. I agree. I'm taking the under all day. 
Yeah, I like the under in this too. Um, I personally, I have to go with Dallas, and we were talking about this before the pod. How, yeah, you're. I'm sitting here betting against Brady in the playoffs, which is probably stupid in hindsight, but. I don't think Tampa Bay is coached well at all. Like, I don't think Todd Bowles is a good coach. I don't think Byron Leftwich is a good coach. Like, I, I think they've got some issues that they really haven't figured out. And the offense scares me a lot. Sure, they have a great defense. They're great at stopping the run. Their secondary has been pretty good this year. Um, but I, I think Dallas is just more well-rounded as a team. Well, you, you just mentioned the exact reason I'm taking Tampa, and that's they can stop the run. They're going to force Dak to beat them. They're going to f- say, hey, hey, Prescott, throw on us. Pass on us. And you know what? Dak Prescott has not looked great as a passer this year. Oh, no, not at all. He's been carried by, not at all. He's been carried by a great offensive line and an incredible run game between Pollard and Zeke. He, yeah, shout out Zeke because Zeke had a major bounce back here. Yes. Zeke was really solid this I year. think that's because of the complimentary uh, piece in, in Pollard. Pollard. Oh, no, yeah. I, I 100% took a, took a agree huge that. part of the workload, and, and Zeke wasn't, you know, getting worn down uh, right. as much. He wasn't. 100%. And Pollard is a great back. Pollard deserves <laughs> a lot of money in this offseason. He, he could be a workhorse somewhere, for he sure. Could, 100%. But yeah. Tampa's run defense is, I think, going to stop both Pollard and Zeke. And I think they're going to say, hey, we're going to stop the run. Make Dak pass on us. Make Sack Prescott beat us. And, um, again, Brady in the playoffs, this is going to come down to a game-winning drive by the Bucks, and Tom Brady's just going to do what he does best and drive down the field with a minute left and win the game. I mean, I could see it. I really could. I just think... And, and when has Dallas ever been good in the playoffs? Mike McCarthy always chokes in the playoffs. Well, Dallas McCarthy's always not a chokes good coach in the playoffs. either. Again, exactly. Well-rounded team, but you don't have the coaching to back it. And I just, I don't know, man. I, I I think Tampa pulls the upset here and beats Dallas. I don't know. I just, even with a good run defense, I still think Tony Pollard is an X factor here. Um, yeah, he is. Tony Pollard is just, he'll make big plays. You know who else is an X factor? Mike Evans. Yeah. You can't guard 6'5". I don't care if you're Trayvon Diggs or... Uh, Whoever else, I, I mean, I, I honestly couldn't name one more quarter on that team. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I is yeah, no, no, I, 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 I can't. I'm trying hard and I really can't. Cowboys I'm, depth chart. I, I'm actually curious though. I am. I think somebody's name is Anthony or something, right? I don't know, man. Deron Bland is their other starting corner. Um, we got Kelvin Joseph and uh, Nishan oh, Wright. I forgot about Kelvin Joseph. Trayvon Mullen. Oh, wow, they got Trayvon Mullen. And uh, CJ Goodwin. Yeah, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Again, who's guarding Mike Evans? Uh, yeah, I... I don't know. It's just, they have to be able to stop... Or Mike, Chris Godwin. They, He's really, loved Chris they have Godwin to be able year. to stop Mike Parsons off the edge, though. Yeah, and, and protection for Brady has been an issue for, for the Bucks this year. Yes, I'll big give you time, that. Big time. Um, but, I mean, Marcus Lawrence hasn't really had that great of a year. He really hasn't, but Michael Parsons has. Michael yeah, Parsons I mean, has carried that D-line. Yeah, you got, you got Michael Parsons, but you just have Michael Parsons. So if, if you find a way to, to stop Michael Parsons, you know, Tristan Wirfs, Michael Parsons is going to be a great matchup. They'd be stupid to put... Michael Parsons on that side though. Well, Donovan Smith isn't that bad either. It's the interior. Donovan Smith hasn't had a great season though. Yeah, but he's not a horrible tackle. No, he's not by any he, means. He's but... he's efficient. I mean, he's not gonna, you know, be perfect all season. But he's not gonna, you know, be bad enough where he's needs to be replaced. Um, his PFF grade is not great this year. Yeah, I don't know. I he's kind of had a down year. It's Micah Parsons is that that Dallas D for sure. Um, yeah, but I still I, I believe in Tampa, man. I think Tampa gets it done. I can see it. Tampa really, back by I really Brady. I could see it. I just think Dallas is a more well rounded team, and I have to give the advantage to their their roster there. Um, I I think again, this is about a, the coaching. I do think this is a really close game, mm-hmm. and. I, I think it's a th- like within it's between one and three point game. I think, yeah. um, 
and yeah, it's going to come down to who can make a stop at the end of the game. And I just trust Dallas's defense to make that stop because of Micah Parsons. Is there a Manning cast for this? Because there I'm watching is. it. There is. Good. There better be because I'm not listening to Troy Aikman ride the Cowboys the entire game. I personally, hot take, I think the Manning cast sucks. I don't think it sucks. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'd much it rather... Be, the Manning cast would be so much better without guests. Yes. If they actually watch the game yes, and analyze. The, the guests ruined the game. The mm-hmm. Manning cast. And all the skits they try to do yeah. and stuff. It, it's just, yeah. it's just overplayed. Focus, it was focus funny on the, the football first time. because I like listening to Peyton and Eli break down what quarterbacks are doing. Yeah, so do I. Um, I just, I, I cannot stomach listening to Troy Aikman. No, yeah, no, that's... And Cowboys that, games. That, yeah, that is going to be pretty brutal. But yes, I did see there is a Manning cast, and yeah, that's all I know. All right. Well, I will. You'll you'll catch me on Monday night watching that because <laughs> there's no uh, snowball's chance in hell I'm listening to Aikman commentate on a Cowboys I'm, game. I'm with you on that. All right. I think that wraps it up. Yeah. Um. Thanks for tuning in. Happy New Year again. Yeah. Happy and New Year. Uh, enjoy the playoff games because these are going to be pretty pretty good. I think. Yeah. Super I think Wild Card weekend. Great, I mean, great games, and it's going to go by uh, you know, super fast, as fast as the season went. Um, so I mean, enjoy them. Yeah, take this football in and, and enjoy it because in about a, a month, we're not going to have any more football for quite a while. Right. So, uh, you know, just enjoy. Yep. Um, check us out on social media. We're at Ice Bath Sports on Instagram and TikTok, at Ice Bath Pod on Twitter, and you can check out the video version of this episode on the Ice Bath Sports Podcast YouTube page. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Enjoy the playoff games. And as always, stay Stay cool. cool.